Hello and welcome to the Counterpoint Podcast. For relaxing times, make it Suntory time. Uh, I'm Brendan, here with Luke. Indeed. And Jonathan. Hello. And this week we're talking about Lost in Translation. As always, going around, short and sweet. Luke, how did you feel about this movie? It was fine, I guess. Jonathan? Really disappointing, actually. Yeah, I did not like this movie. Yeah. <laughs> um, not good. Would never watch again. Yeah. I think this movie was made for a certain audience in 2003. It was made for the pretentious like, Oscar audience. I don't even think it was that pretentious. Like the... I don't, yeah, I don't think it was. No, I'm not saying the movie's pretentious. I'm just saying it was made for the, the Oscar Academy people. Who I yeah. believe to be pretentious. I don't, even I don't think know if it was. was. Yeah, yeah. No, I, it was made for like you, hipsters in two thousand three before there was like a title of hipster. I don't even know about that because, like, I don't know. It was and just like, weird. Do, what do you? What's your understanding of the story? Um, it, so my understanding of it, and part of the reason why I don't like it is because I think it fails in this regard for half of the movie. Is it is about two people who are in a foreign country and they feel um, uneasy and just sort of lost at sea and have nothing to grab hold of and everything's unfamiliar. And they, right. they, they grab onto each other because there's some sense of shared experience there. I don't even think it's necessarily that. Um, I mean, I it's literally called Lost in Translation, though. Yeah, I think that's I a part of it, but yeah, I agree. It's not like, that doesn't encapsulate with they're, they're not lost because they're in Japan. They're lost because they're lost in their lives. But, yeah. Sure, but I mean, they are also like. Just I, I think the setting is more meant to uh, yeah. ex- like exacerbate that. Exactly. And I, I think yeah. the thing about. You know, having Tokyo um, in this movie is that maybe in 2003, it was, you know, especially because we're all fucking weebs, right? Like, if you're not familiar with what uh, what Japan looks like, this movie, like, probably looks really good uh, to someone watching it. Like, Like, wow, look at all these amazing, like scenes and places and things especially to an american audience which is this was almost entirely uh surely it was almost entirely maybe some uk was targeted as like the demographic whatever you want to say but like someone who knows like a little bit more about japan will watch this and be like "Eh, it's kind of i don't know it's almost problematic i thought the same i thought it was borderline racist I was I was really struggling with uh, in a big way with a lot of how the movie was treating. Yeah, I think it has some problems. Clashing cultures. It was like Jesus. It was bad. I think in two thousand three, uh, that wasn't there wasn't a spotlight on that to the same degree, and I think uh, with how beautiful it looked, you didn't usually see that. I don't. I know in two thousand three, I didn't like just see like what. Uh, you know, Tokyo looked like in different areas what Japan looked like. And it actually was kind of funny because it reminded me of like uh, Yakuza 0 and how it looked because <laughs> it was like early 2000s um, Japan or maybe Yakuza uh, uh, I think 1 or that? 2 is more like early 2000s. Yeah. Zero is in the but, 80s. I think but there were a lot of things that were going on in lost in translation where it was like clearly made in the 80s like a lot of the stuff oh yeah but uh but i mean like the arcade like all those machines have been around forever some of them yeah like ufo catcher i saw in the background (laughs) Um, it was also like showing like how great japanese culture was in some ways while (laughs) at the same time like shitting on it I don't even but think, I think it was showing how great it was. I think it was just I like... it was in a way. I mean, there was a lot of things that seemed really cool that I bet a lot of people went to Japan after watching this movie. Maybe, yeah. Can we discuss the elephant in the room with this movie? What, which Go is? Uh, 
The fucking age difference. <laughs> That's one. How it's so oh, it's so bad though. She yeah. is eighteen at the release of this movie. She's probably seventeen during production. He's fifty two. Uh, okay, yikes. so what I've got to say to that is nothing um, really ever happens between them two other than a kiss and a. That's, like, that's what I was about to say. Is like it, I thought it would be more of a, a romance story, but it's really not. Yeah, it's it's. I, it's just sad. I, I think the whole thing is that it's supposed to be sad that like you meet someone that you have like a really good connection with, whether or not it's sexual or not. Like it's just like it's sad because you know it's coming to an end. You know what I mean? I I think it. I I think it if the movie had sense. yes, if the movie had gone on any longer, which I think the movie would have fared better if it was a platonic relationship. For me, yeah, I agree. I actually think at the end when they kissed, I was like kind of disappointed. Yeah, so I knew they kissed in the movie because I've heard people talk about this movie. And so, like, uh, at, like, the 75 80% mark, there's a kiss on the cheek. I'm like, oh, is this what people are talking about? This is... That's that's fine. And then the end happens, like, oh, yep, no. Gross. But it's not... I mean, it's not like they're, like, making out at the same time. No, but, like, he, like, licks his lips after and, like, looks longingly at her <laughs> as he walks yeah. away. It's weird. It, and it's so strange too because they almost like they almost got away with the fact that they were kind of just friends up until that point yeah i would have so was, much she was a little disappointed that he slept with the, the singer but yeah that could just be like a friend disappointed in their friend for making a bad decision uh, yeah i would have been so much happier in this movie if it was platonic at the same time i felt like the getting with the singer also was completely unnecessary and didn't really go anywhere it was just kind of yeah weird. so i think this movie was originally written to be some type of romance and that's why that scene exists and then they cast them and they're like yeah we can't do that well also how old not scar jo, but how old is the character she just graduated college so okay. probably a little bit older 22 23 but 22. it's a philosophy major so that could be like a three-year major 21 22 21 to 24 let's say I think it could be anywhere between like twenty. I know and some twenty-year-old girls who were like, "I want like fifty-year-olds." Like that was like, yeah, but also like I'm saying it's very uncomfortable that she's probably seventeen during the filming of this movie. Yeah, and you're right about that. But I mean, like, I don't think that is the biggest elephant in the room. Like, I'm sure it was when this movie came out, right? And I think today it's a lot of like. There's like a lot of like low key racist shit. Oh yeah, yeah. In this movie, I was like really uncomfortable a lot of yeah, times. Like, like Bill Murray was just like taking a piss on a lot of people that were just like trying to talk to him, and I was just like, "What an asshole!" Like, you first off, you're in their country. Like, you don't speak Japanese. That's on you. Like, you can't be mad at them. Yeah. Like, and like they were in a restaurant and they like she's like oh yeah take your shoes off in this restaurant and the guy's like confused he's like what the fuck and then he starts trying to drag the cook into it but I, like all i gotta say oh, to that is be terrifying and i don't think the movie was trying to make a statement like this is the right thing to do i think the point was they really didn't like seek out japan it's not like they went there like oh i really want to go to japan like both of them like bill murray only went for a paycheck mm -hmm. And she went for her basically husband. was basically like, I'll tag along with my husband. Yeah. yeah. So um, it's but there's ways to make a there's really ways to show that the characters are isolated without them having to like I don't know. Yeah. They also didn't they, need to keep repeating the is that all he said? Like you could have done that once. Yeah, yeah, but I, I think in that scene specifically um if you're talking about the one where he's being filmed at the beginning of the movie yes yeah. um she's definitely lying like she is that's not all he's saying like he's uh lying. she's probably shortening it but like japanese is a like it's a more wordy language that's why when when games get translated in particular ah. like i disagree I don't think it's as wordy. I think it's about equally as wordy, and you just don't realize because in any time you you look at a foreign language, it seems like there's a lot of talking. No, I mean in terms of translation, it gets wordier. I don't know, man. 
All I got to say is she definitely let shit left. Which shit I guess is off. backwards how it should have been. She, I mean, she did, yes. Yeah. But that could just be simplification. Yeah, but it was like shit that he later got mad at. I mean, about. but that's like, that is a translator's job as well as like to. Yeah, that's why I'd be simplify. pissed at the translator if I was Bill Murray. I'd be like, what the fuck? No, no, but it, like, it's also her job to simplify. I think that's one of the things. least egregious. Yeah, I don't think that's good. I, I just don't like that, like, I don't know. Yeah, no, it I, seemed I, like I, they made it like a thing about the language to me. Uh, Maybe she was actually just leaving stuff. I mean, they, they literally make the mention of like, why do they swap their R's and L's? Yeah. But that and is like, a thing that happens, though. That is a real thing, but they do not swap their R's and L's. Their R's and L's. No, L, L's really become R's. They're the same. Like, yeah. when you say la or ra, right? Over there, it's a da. Like, that's. Yeah, like they a, they don't yeah. do the the tongue to top of mouth. It's almost so like so when they do R. L's in English, it comes out like an R. It's almost like an R and an L had a baby. <laughs> also, another elephant in the room for me: all of the characters were super unlikable, terrible people. <laughs> yeah, so this is part of the failing. <laughs> like, oh my god! I so not... we talked about what the movie's about. And this is why the movie fails half and half on me for each of the two story things for different characters. Um, so the two things we talked about, right, was unhappy in their life, not having a good time in unfamiliar territory. Those are the two things that are uh, ostensibly happening in this movie. Bill Murray's unhappy in his life because he's an asshole. He forgets to say goodbye to his kid when he's leaving, and he also doesn't he remember. doesn't respond to his wife ever. Doesn't remember his birthday, his kid's birthday. Yeah, he's just shitty. Yeah, but I mean, and here's the thing, right? I feel like someone watched one of Bill Murray's really good movies and was like, "Oh, we want that character." Yeah, I also think he's just Bill Murray in this. Movie. Mm -hmm. So I don't think Bill Murray's actually a bad dude. I, I feel like he acts. No, no, but I mean, like in terms of his know. character, not like what he does. He's still oh, just Bill Murray in this movie. Yeah, and I mean, Bill Murray, uh, I hear nothing but, like, people who've seen Bill Murray in real life, who've interacted with him in one way or another, all have nothing but positive things to say about him. Yeah, sorry, I wasn't trying to say Bill Murray's a bad husband or father. Yeah. I'm just saying, in terms of how he acts in this movie, he was just being but Bill Murray. I've got to say, um, it feels like someone watched Groundhog Day and we're like, oh, he's funny, like, in a kind of, like, he's miserable yeah. Yeah. kind of way. And then they mm -hmm. went and were like, yeah, that's who we're gonna. And if you look, this director has has casted or cast Bill Murray like multiple times for mm -hmm. the exact same role, essentially. So, I mean, he plays it well. I just don't think it fits what the movie was going for. Yeah, I don't think any of the acting is bad. I just think, I think too, like this movie, like for being when it came out, like it's lost a lot of its any kind of meaning it had mm -hmm. by today. Like it's one of those movies where like 10, 20 years go by and it's like, what the fuck is this? It's like, and here's the thing. I really thought I was going to be alone and like, I really thought I was going to probably give it the worst score, but now I'm thinking I might be the one who gives it. The yeah. Best I think score. you're, it sounds like you're the best. Yeah, score. It sounds like you are. Can I, can I give you the other failure of this movie for me on the other side of the token? Right. Sure. The uh, unfamiliar place, not having a good time. Um, they had a great time. Well, so I mean, yeah, that's the point. Is when they're together, they're having a good time. They're supposed, but they were miserable on their own. But actually, Scarlett Johansson has a pretty good time on her own. Like, so she goes to the the flower class thing that's going on, right? And like, she walks in. A lady's being very nice to her. Like, she smiles, she seems to enjoy, like, placing the flower in there and, like, building this bouquet. And then she just starts, like, side-eyeing the other ladies who are there assembling flower uh, bouquets. I'm like, what? Like, what What happened here? You were just smiling and now you're uncomfortable that other people exist? And then she goes to an arcade. She makes random friends to then hang out with the next night. Yeah. It's like really undermined. She's having a good time on her own. <laughs> I think what she's missing is just her relationship is basically gone and that's what she's upset about where I feel like Bill Murray is playing a character that is afraid of or not afraid but just like 
mad at everything almost. I, I don't yeah. know. I do yeah, think this is this is another this is another reason why I think the movie fails too. Is like the character's misery is entirely self brought, and I think that that's what Brennan's yes. getting at. Yeah, is like like Bill Murray is like a famous actor, like in a place, you know, like he has a life, he has a wife, he has kids. He's the one who doesn't give a shit about them. He's the one who's like forgetting all this. Yeah, stuff. his wife isn't neglecting him. She seems yeah. to love him. <laughs> she seems she seems fine. She seems lovely. That's like when they were on the phone. I was like. And he was like rolling his eyes at her at one point, and I was like, "She's Hold not on, even doing at anything." The same time, like she keeps calling at like four a.m. I mean, so she might not understand the time zones, but like our members of our family have done that to me, and I live in the same country as them. <laughs> also, he could call her, and he doesn't. Anyway, um, I don't know. I feel like we basically have the exact same things to talk about. Jonathan, I, why did you? Uh, why did you pick this movie? Uh, it's in a lot of songs that I like. Like a lot of people clip the one part of the movie, and like the 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 worst thing was is that it ruined the one part of the movie that I <laughs> might have liked, which was when they got super pretentious and there she's just like I just don't know what to do with my life and then I thought the movie was gonna go somewhere, but literally the part that they clipped to add into the music, that was it. Like it was literally just like three yeah. lines. And so I so like, oh I thought that this was going. So somewhere. wait, what are the exact lines that make it into songs that you know? It's um, she's like I I just don't know what to do you know I tried to be a writer uh, I tried taking pictures you know every girl goes through photography phase like horses you know take dumb dumb pictures of your feet hmm. it's like ah uh, I I I'm not worried about you you'll figure all that out and like that's it and oh like, the I, didn't, I just don't know what I'm supposed to be you'll figure that out the more you know who you are and what you want the less you let things upset you yes like those those three lines right there those were like the lines that make it into songs all the time and i thought that the movie was going to be more about two people who were like actually like lost trying to figure it out but it wasn't even about them figuring it out it was just about them being lost most of the time which made the movie just super like oh okay Mm -hmm. yeah i don't know also the the scene where they're getting to know each other highlights what a shithead he is yeah when they're getting one I've, i've got the quote right here so she asks, so what are you doing here? He says, uh, a couple of things. Taking a break from my wife, forgetting my son's birthday, and uh, getting paid $2 million to endorse a whiskey when I could be doing a play somewhere. The brother says, oh. And he says, but the good news is the whiskey works. So he's, okay, so he's miserable because he's an asshole. I have something to say, by the way. Go ahead. Um, the whiskey does work. That is some great whiskey, by the way. <laughs> If you've never had Suntory, it's excellent. Like, all right, okay. This podcast is now endorsing this whiskey. I guess. No, I'm in, I'm endorsing it. Um, I'm a fan of Suntory Toki. If you give that a try, it's it's a little <laughs> bit smoky, but not very much. If you're like too, you don't like um, if you don't like like uh, an Isla Scotch, but then you should hate him even more because he wanted to leave. When they were going to offer him more work with their whiskey. He does uh, say, for relaxing times, sundry times. Well, that's the line for the commercial. He doesn't, it's not his opinion. Also, also, Luke, he said it wrong, like, at least 10 times. Come on. But I just got to say, it's not about that. I just like it. It was funny. And that's probably the best part of the movie to me. When I like, he was like, (laughs) I enjoy that whiskey. It's good stuff. Yeah. But yeah, it was, um, you know, I, I don't think this podcast is going to go on very much longer because I don't think we have, I think that you are driving it into a hole. We have talked about stuff and we've gotten to talk about stuff and then you feel like cut it off a couple of times and we're like, yep, we agree. I mean, there's not much. I mean, like, do, do you have anything to add, Brennan? Uh, I mean, we could talk about Sofia Coppola if you guys have seen any of her films. I'm aware of some of them, but I haven't actually seen any of her films. I don't know. What what has she done? Um, Bling Ring is one of hers. Uh, Marie Antoinette, Somewhere, The Beguiled. Virgin (laughs) Suicide. Virgin Suicides, yeah. Yeah, The Godfather Part 3. Well, she's an actress in that. Oh, okay. It's not her. comes up. Because she's, you know, Uh, she's a Coppola. (laughs) One of the Coppolas. But yeah, I, I don't think any movies <clears throat> she's directed have been particularly 
Uh, yeah, this was just a thing I, I, I didn't know if you guys had seen them. Because I, I know Bling Ring was a thing people talked about when it came out, yeah. but I did not personally see it. Hmm. I, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I, this yeah. movie, like... Yeah, it was just very disappointing. Because, like, it could have been... <laughs> I liked the idea of it. Like, I think the idea of two people being lost in their lives and meeting and kind of connecting over that and they're in a foreign country where they feel isolated like it could have been done way 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 back. i just think yeah. this movie is not anywhere near as good and that, that's like it's nowhere near as good as what people have like in the art community have watched this movie and who've told me like oh it's the greatest movie of time. Like, it's it's one of the best ever. like i was nah. expecting yeah, I was expecting it to be more pretentious. It's not that, even that's it's not that it's like pretentious. It's just like people who are pretentious like this movie. I, I don't think it has to necessarily be pretentious itself. No, no, that's what I'm saying is like because of it, I thought that it would have basically that one scene. I thought that this movie would be more of that. Mm -hmm. And so like I wanted to see it because uh, – I enjoy some of it. Like, I think sometimes you can lean into that and it's okay. But this movie just like, that was the only scene that did it. And then the rest of it was just like, what? it just stumbled. Like it didn't yeah. have anything. Also, they didn't really go anywhere. Like yeah. the, at the end, they were still miserable. It felt. Yeah, yeah, of course. Cause they didn't do anything about their lives. They're just shitty people. Yeah. Dude. In fact, the Bill Murray's character just made it worse. Yeah. The fact that he's like slept with that one chick was like the singer. That that was like the moment where the entire movie it was like, like irre unredeemable at that point. It was I don't like, know if it was irredeemable, but it was just like it was just weird, and it was just like nothing. I don't understand. Like, well, it just it undermined just, the movie. Cause, yeah. Because like, if we're supposed to root for these people who are struggling with finding their way, and then they just like continually make the worst choice for their life. Uh, it's like, well, at, like at what point it's the worst choice what if he has like you don't know he could have an agreement with his uh wife to be whatever it's you know, clearly kind of like... not how it is in the movie like the movie doesn't set it up like that <clears throat> they, they also don't say anything against it so if you're left just not knowing it definitely is possible that he has like a hall pass free pass whatever i think that that is so unlikely that it's not even yeah relevant I actually it's because she almost... she's even she's even like poking at him that she wants him she's like yeah the kids are getting used to you not being here like and she's talking with him every night or well not every night she's talking with him as much as she can she's like obviously wants him back and she's like setting up i mean that's of course but if you're like if you're fine you don't think you know something sexual is gonna drive a wedge between uh, your relationship i don't know if you know this but like the Bill and Melinda Gates. Like, did did you hear about this? About like, that they divorced. They both had they both had like a hall pass their entire time together. I mean, once you're like to a certain level of rich, it's just like, and you know, like I'm gonna stick with you, obviously. Like but we have children didn't. together, etc. They, they made sure their children were like adults before they divorced. I mean, like I don't care about their relationship i'm just saying it's clearly not what the movie was going I mean, with i think it's unlikely just, that that's what was happening in the movie either way like it, it it doesn't do anything it's just pointless to have him sleep with the singer yes Other I, but i think it's just to like i exemplify yeah. like that he's lost but instead of doing that to me it just like made it very clear that he is his own destruction and that there yeah, will never be any fixing it People say the same thing about uh, Bojack Horseman, and people laud Bojack Horseman as like, "Oh, it's it's good." Well, but nobody lauds tries, the things he's doing. <laughs> yeah, but he tries to change in it. Like it's very different. Like you can yeah. see, does he try? You can see uh, a couple times, but then he definitely reverts, and it's like, yeah, I feel like I got tired of it around season three. But anyway, well, this is that's Bojack. fair. That's fair. But like Bill Murray, it could never be a Bojack tried. Horseman. Bill Murray never tried. So That's true. He does not try. Doesn't, doesn't not make sense. All. Also, you can see that he's obviously a bit upset, like when he wakes up and he sees the stuff nearby. Like, oh fuck. Yeah. But, he he also talks about how great kids are, and he didn't remember his son's fucking birthday or say goodbye to him. 
Yeah. But at the same time, like, I don't care if a character is unlikable for the movie to be good. Like, it just doesn't matter. No. Like, I think, um, what's his name? The, the, in Big Lebowski, uh, Walter, right? Yeah. I think Walter is literally shit, and I hate those people in real life, but I think the character's funny as hell. And right, as but far- like... But in this, it's 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 just pointless. Like, yeah, he's not he's funny. Seen. He's not serving a purpose. He's our main character that we're following, mm-hmm. and he sucks. I don't think you need a main character. I mean, I, I think like okay, here's an example: <laughs> Star Wars. Luke is the least likable character of everyone else in that entire show. Like in season, in uh in episode four and five. Uh, um, you follow sure. him because he's supposed to be like an everyman. Whatever. But he's on the hero's journey. Yeah, yeah, I suppose. But this again, is like a, this is a movie without direction, with characters yeah. that with with no. All all the examples you brought up had a point for the shittiness, whether it's played for a joke or development. I'm just saying this movie doesn't have that. I know, yeah. and it's a bad movie. <laughs> all right, are we ranking it? So eager to be done with it. I know. I am. I mean, we're all like on the same page. I'm trying to be like more I don't know I'm trying to push it a little bit but like there's there's nothing coming out here it's just we all pretty much agree okay I mean I mean we can end uh, one interesting tidbit about this movie actually um and and this may push Jonathan to what his pick will be um her is a companion piece to this movie what do you mean Sophia Coppola and Spike Jones were married this is Sophia's Coppola, Sophia Coppola's movie about her unhappiness in the marriage, and uh, after their divorce, Spike Jones made her. I do love her. That's one of my favorite movies. Both That's with so Scarlett Johansson. That makes sense. Like it actually makes sense. That's there you go. So, that's, oh, little, that's kind of fun. Little tidbit. Cool. This movie still sucks. It doesn't redeem it at all, but. No, no. It's interesting. That's cool. That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> director, and uh, I think Sofia Coppola, from what I've seen, is not. Anyway. Um, yeah, we can we can do rankings. Luke, what would you give this one? It was five. It's a solid five. Let me let me find my spreadsheet. Let me find my data. Uh, Jonathan, what would you give this movie? Uh, either a four or a three. I'll go with four. Yeah, I'm between four and three as well. I guess four, like the performances aren't bad. The movie's just bad. Yeah. I'll, I'll give it a four. And they're, you know, like the, the audio is decent. The, the yeah, the shots are great. Like, it's just. This is now our worst ranked movie. No. 4.3333. <laughs> three. Wait, this is worse than said it? It is. Ten, got a five. Because you, cause you give ten out of six. How are you ever going to recover from this? Because you, you got to think ten, it was four, five, six. This is four, four, five. So. Hey, at least I'm bold enough to put movies out there that I don't, I don't know about yet. So did I. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, bad movie. Uh, bad pick, Jonathan. Way to go. Uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, so next week is... My pick. Oh, actually, before before I talk about the pick, there is kind of um, a, a segment that I, I wanted to pitch to you guys. That um, I, I don't know that you guys would do it, but it's something I will potentially do and like bring out of the podcast uh, called book report. Because a lot of the things we have watched have had have been adapted from something else, uh, and I, I may buy some of them and, and read them. And so then, in episodes such as this one where we have a lot of leftover runtime, um, a, a shorter episode, do a book report and, and go back to one of the things and talk about uh, the, the thing I read. That sounds fun. Because, yeah, Moonlight, uh, Handmaiden, Snowpiercer are all based on books, I believe. Tenet, too. Is Tenet? I'm just kidding. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> Do we have a new worst movie? Uh, we do have a new worst movie. How does that affect our overall scores? Luke is in the lead. I am second 
Jonathan is last. Jonathan has scored movies the lowest overall. I'm the biggest critic. Only shot the lowest overall. Um, yeah, wait, I have our second most best rated one though, don't I? You do. Yeah, uh, you also Moonlight. Two... You also have the two bottom movies. That's okay. And I'm middle of the road, baby. <laughs> um. So yeah, next next week is my pick. Um. I'm between a few things. Um. It. it it may end up being the 1997 Gore Verbinski movie, Mouse Hunt. Um, it may also end up being Demolition from 2015 or Nightcrawler from 2014. But unfortunately not Demolition Man. Not Demolition Man. Not that one. Um, but yeah, so we do not have an official pick for next week yet. I'll have to figure that one out. Um... Yeah, does anybody else have anything they need to add or talk about? Any meta things about scoring or whatever? I don't know. I, it's, it's tough. Scoring is tough? Yeah, looking at the scores, it's tough to gather anything about this. I mean, I know we've, we've talked about how, like, technically I rank the highest. Mm-hmm. But it's not. Yeah, like you've that given the only 10. Hmm? You've given the only 10. That's true, but it's also a movie I just absolutely love. Yeah. We haven't gone lower than four yet, although this movie almost did. Yeah, this movie was very close. I mean, all, you guys me, don't want to watch crappy movies. There was nothing in this movie that I was like, I fucking hate this movie. It was just like, they're, like it's, it is what it is. That's my vibe. Like, I, I was like, eh, you know. I mean, this movie wasn't even interesting enough to be bad. Yeah. Yeah, it's it commits the the crime of being like, yep, I probably but will. It's kind of, you, it's kind of memorable though. Like even that's though it's, true. It's, it's, it's a yeah, you make a good point. It's not like Tenet, so it's still, <laughs> we're still gonna rag on Tenet about how it's just yeah. But anyway, I mean, you say Tenet's not memorable, but you guys can't let it go. It's because it's the only example we have of a t- movie like that. But I am I guarantee you that there are shots from that movie still in your head. There's a lot of uh This the sailboat is in my head from my hatred of it. It shouldn't <laughs> exist. Uh, okay, now I remember the sailboat. No, I was just thinking people walking in reverse. Uh, yeah, there's like, no backwards shots that like get you going like yeah. That's I mean I I remember some good shots. Like the opera scene's beautiful. Yeah. I don't. Know. It doesn't save the movie, but <laughs> it's just. Me. I didn't rate it highly. I just <laughs> rated it slightly above average. But you rated it higher than Snowpiercer. I, I really came into this with Lost in Translation thinking like I'm probably gonna like do this the lowest. No, I knew I wasn't gonna like this movie. I told Jonathan as much when he said he was gonna pick it. Well, the way that you guys were acting made me second guess it. But I thought that I was gonna like love this movie, but. No, I knew enough about this movie to know I wouldn't like it. Mm. See, yeah. I have nothing wrong with like I um, all of the pieces I like, but like it it just didn't come together correctly. Like yeah, the isolation, true. the isolation wasn't shown the correct way, and I actually I, left it feeling like it was slightly. Yeah, I had a friend in Lansing who loved this movie, and he turned it on one time when I was really fucked up. And I just remember like certain scenes and thinking like, oh, I got to rewatch this movie. Like there's some like beautiful scenes and like specifically remembering like the arcade. I remember them going to a hot pot. I remember them um, uh, doing karaoke in like the city. Right. But like literally what I have in my head is like I'm waking up and I'm looking at the TV. (laughs) Then I just zone back out. (laughs) And, uh, yeah, I remember for like the next week, he would just talk about how great it is. And now I'm like, damn. Okay. Like, <laughs> I guess I just don't get the vibe. I, it's confusing. Yeah. yeah. Well, at some point, I'm sure we will watch its companion piece and talk about it because it's been on Jonathan's list forever. It's one of my favorites. Uh, but I think that's it for this week. We watch him. Don't think that exists. Anyway, that's it for this week. 
Um, thanks for listening. Stop by next time. And we'll see you next time.